Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. I'm Erica Hughes. Um, if you haven't subscribed, if you like this video or like the pieces that I've created today, please subscribe and let me know what you think. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos, all that good stuff. So I have two pours for you guys today. This one and then there will be one right after this one. I'm working on 14 inch MDF Board, round boards. Um, they are moisture resistant. My two paints are mixed with USA Flood Flow Troll and water for consistency. My pigments are mixed with a gel gloss water mix. And you can see, um, check the description box under this video for links to um, some mixing videos. So right now I am just actually not flooding this board. I'm just kind of wetting it because it's MDF and I kind of want, I'm blowing out all my paint today. So I want it just to move a little bit easier. So I'm just scraping up some of those that leftover paint from a previous pour and just smearing it on that board. And now I am going to lay my colors down. I'll go over the colors with you guys as well. This is Golden Peach by This Little Piggy Pigment. And I'll link down below in the description where you can get the pigments from if you'd like them. Uh, we have a ball gown. That's an interference gold. The Golden Peach, so it's like peach and then it has a shift to gold. It's really, it's beautiful. Um, and then we have, what do we have? Dick Blick Payne's Gray and a shot of some scraped paint from the um, area just underneath my board. <laughs> I was a little bit short on paint, so I just scraped some up and put it in there. So we have my hair dryer. It's a 1200 watt travel hair dryer. So I put that Payne's Gray over the top, expecting that to be the most dominant color in this pour. And that's what I have. So we're going to have to, it will develop a lot more than what you see right now. I think it's it turned out stunning. It dried perfect. No issues there. I will definitely post the dried result in my, um, either my, well, probably my Instagram and my YouTube community feed. You guys need, if you don't know how to get to the community feed on YouTube, you just head into my channel. And at the menu bar in my channel, though, it'll say community. There'll be a little tab there that says community. Just click on that. And it's kind of like a news feed. It'll be all my posts. Um, just recently, I did like a, a, a viewer poll, like a little survey for you guys. And I'm just asking what you guys would like to see on my channel, what you like, what techniques you enjoy watching me do. And I think the bloom technique and the Dutch pour came in at like a complete tie. Um, I think there was like 200 votes so far anyway. And those two techniques came full stop tie. So if you'd like to vote, head over to that community feed and check out the latest post. And you can vote on um, what, you know, just let me know. It helps me put out content for you guys like paint, you know, paintings and whatnot. I want to be posting videos that you guys want to see me doing. Um, I love painting and I like posting videos for you guys to watch. So as you can see, it is developing. And there's no silicone oil in any of my paints or pigments. I think this is a stunning piece. I'm so happy with this piece. Love it. And I'll bring you in um, for, oh, I wasn't happy with that little section, so I just blew it off. And I knew some more cell, cells would develop because, as you can see, all my paints right now are so reactive. And then, of course, you want to scrape the underneath of your painting. So, you know, to scrape all the drips off. Otherwise, it, it'll continue to pull your paint down and move your um, your composition. However, the gel gloss that I have in the pigments, that actually does help kind of stabilize things. And, you know, it's a gloss, so it's going to be a little bit heavier than 
um, see the, the tube paints and the flow trial mix. Um, so it kind of, kind of just like chills everything out and just stabilizes things. So I don't get a lot of movement. And of course you want to make sure your surface is nice and level. Um, you could see me torching there just to get some of the, um, air bubbles out of the paint and as well as help get some of the cells up. And then here we are for a close up. This was like 30, 40 minutes later. So it did still develop. So it is gorgeous. So there was just the panes gray in there for that main background that I dumped on top of the golden peach and the ball gown. So that was it. Well, and a shot of the, you know, the paint drippings that I had um, on that painter sheet. So now we're going to move into the next one. I am working on a deep, ed deep edge canvas. So this is going to be pretty much the same. I'm going to do this like the same way that I just did. This one goes crazy on the cells, so be sure to stick around to the end so you can see the close up. So since this is a deep edge, I'm just kind of going to pour a little bit of paint around the edges and then I'm going to um, just cover up the sides just to get them wet and, you know, so I have to do less touching up later. Otherwise, that, I just don't want any of the white canvas showing through around the sides. So I thought this would help because it's such a far reach when you have the deep edge canvas to make sure you use enough paint to get all over you know, all the way over the edges. And I am blowing this all out with the hairdryer. So I just want to double check, just be certain that the sides are going to be covered and there's not going to be any white peeking through. And let's see, uh, I think that color is Prussian blue. It should have, been, it should have popped up there by Amsterdam. Okay, that's me thinking. <laughs> Man, I'm still thinking. Okay, so we're going to go for the, the ball gown again, which is that interference gold. And then this is Carbon Black by Golden. In that bottle, it's mixed with Floetrol, the USA Floetrol as well, and then water for consistency. This is Galaxy by This Little Piggy. And Turquoise Green by Amsterdam. Okay, and I'm going to dump a whole lot of the Prussian blue on top of this in hopes that it is my main kind of color for the overall piece. And now we're going to blow, blow it out. Now, it does look like a lot, of, a lot of paint. It is. However, I do, I am working with a deep edge canvas and I want that paint to go over. And whatever falls off, I will absolutely scrape that up, especially because I'm nearly out of flow trial. I will scrape that up into a cup. If I need to run it through a little filter, I will. Um, just to get the, you know, chunks, any dried paint or anything. But I've just been scraping it up right away after my pour into a cup and mixing it up. And I get <laughs> really gorgeous colors because I'm using some... Um, pigments that have mica in them and so the backgrounds like the base paint I use it for base paint and it is like shimmery it's stunning so it's kind of like I almost like to just do a little practice piece before I lay my base layer down with um some pigments and then just you know just to a little warm-up and then take my palette knife there and mix everything up and re-spread it out for a base and I have this like lovely gorgeous like shimmery base for a Dutch pour or whatever um, and then yeah we don't like wasting paint so scrape it up put it in a cup if it needs to be strained or filtered through I usually poke little holes in my little four ounce cups there sit them on top of a, 
uh, eight ounce cup and then pour my Floetrol in there and then it just kind of keeps all the boogers out. So this one developed um, pretty nicely so far. It does keep going. It was like crazy cells. So stick around for the close up. It's a stunning piece. I absolutely love this. Having fun playing with the interference. Um, I don't even know. Is this a Dutch pour or just, I'm just going to, I don't even know. Um, but I'm having fun with the interference pigments in a hairdryer, blowout, whatever you want to call it. Acrylic pouring technique. So I'm just scraping the sides again, guys. Very important. You want to get all those drips down. Do that for, I usually go, it really just depends how long it takes me to clean up my studio after I'm done pouring. But I'll just walk over to it and scrape it, you know, for like half hour maybe. Or... Pretty much when you stop seeing drips and everything has kind of just chilled out and calmed down. Now I have this video, this um, segment of the video just at normal speed. Um, it seems like it's not develop. It, it's clearly developing. It's just it seems like it's taken A little while to finish developing. I don't know what I'm saying. So we're going to come in right now for a close-up. And I got some really giant boulder cells. And I think it has a lot, I mean, has a lot to do with the flow trawl in it and the water and the brand of paints and whatnot. But I think these really big, like, bouldery cells I'm getting, I think from that gel gloss I'm using to mix my pigments with. I don't know. I'm still experimenting to figure that out. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to get cut off here in a few seconds. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and following and subscribing and all that stuff. Um, so yes, until the next video, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye!